the 90s, then we moved into something called Citizen Summits in the kind of noughties and 2010s, and now we've got um, Citizens Assemblies, but more or less uh, attempts to create new kinds of democratic governance chambers because people have been proven time and time again to be way ahead of politicians on the key issues that matter. And so Citizens Assemblies are selected by sortition, they're selected by lots, like you would with jury service, they are demo demo demographically representative, so we would the Global Assembly, that was demographically um, represented by age, gender, income, views on climate, so it's a, a true reflection of the global population, and we ask them the same questions that the climate negotiators and politicians yeah. are making, and then they make their own rep um, recommendation. However, the way I think about citizens' assemblies is as ways to galvanise civic energy, to galvanise citizens' power, to push for change themselves. It could be insulating your home, it could be organising in response to the pandemic, uh, but then also as well, getting power holders themselves to change their policies. Because one of the really important things, trap we must not fall into is this idea that they've got all the power, or, you know, big oil's got all the power, or the power lies somewhere else. We have significant amounts of power ourselves, but we need to remember that a hundred years ago, you know, the consumerist paradigm we're in was a deliberate construct generated post-World War One. I'm sure many of you know the word of Bernard um, Bernays who developed that. The way we think like we do, the way in which the social media tells have been developed, are developed in a way to, 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 to distract us from creating other change. I mean, this isn't this isn't an accident. It, this, is, this is how it actually works. It's not even it's not even controversial in terms of if you work in tech or Palo Alto, or Silicon Valley, etc. Is that I don't know if that's useful, but um, <laughs> yeah. There seems to be a, a gap to me in terms of empowerment. Like you're asking the government to um, allow assistance assembly first of all, so you're saying we should take that power but actually we're, we're waiting for, for permission from you. So, And then after the citizen assembly, we're then saying what? You, you then enact what we say, so then we're handing power back to them. I, I don't quite understand all those dynamics of power shifting. Brilliant, what's your name, sorry? Sam, I mean, these are the best, that's a, the, those are critical questions. So when, we, when I started my career doing this, that's exactly what we used to do. So it was, it was in the years of Blair and Brown, they loved saying, we'll pay for you to have a citizens' assembly and we'll implement what you're going to do. And they funded loads and, you know, and, um, you know, and my, and, and, but they pretty much never implemented the recommendations. As we, we kind of learned the hard way, if you like, that getting those mandates from politicians um, are, are insufficient to push for change. Now sometimes, so um, Macron, for the big climate assembly they had there a few years ago, he's apparently now 62% of the recommendations have now been implemented, so that does sometimes happen. But the way we're trying to think about it, but the problem with that paradigm of asking for permission from politicians is just you're, you're solidifying a parent-child relationship, which is fundamentally both not true and problematic. And so the model that we're much more interested in is supporting communities themselves to establish their own citizens' assemblies so that they can actually, um, and, uh, those, their own permanent citizens' assemblies, so we're creating the new governance infrastructure and you know, sometimes complementing and supporting these institutions, but also cre creating competition in the market. Because look, we all know that they are not up to the job. It's clear. I mean, you know, we have to be clear about that. About that. So the only way we're really going to get for, you know, improve their game, we're doing them a favour, is by creating new forms of governance to challenge to challenge them. Um, so does that answer the question, Sam?